Pew, pew, pew. Ever since the travesty that was Spider-Man 3 came out, Spider-Man has been pretty much dead to me as far as movies go. But now Spider-Man is part of the MCU, so the stakes are a lot higher. So let's do this. <laughs> Spider-Man Homecoming. Here we go. We're jumping into the sixth feature-length Spider-Man film, and this is definitely a different approach than any of those other ones. Now, this is not another origin story in the vein of how Peter Parker gets bit by the spider and gains his powers. This really isn't about that. Now, this movie is about how Peter Parker becomes Spider-Man, but becomes, becomes him here and here. It was like they looked at everything that we had seen in Spider-Man before on the big screen and said, okay, we're not gonna do that. Radioactive spiders discovering his abilities, discovering he can climb on walls, spider sense, hurry up. They didn't feel the need to show it to us again, which was awesome. Also, also, we have our first look at Spider-Man as an actual modern-day teenager. He's a sophomore, he's in high school, and he actually got a teenager to play a teenager. Not someone who's 30 or near 30 trying to act like a teenager. And it's brought into modern times. He's not slinging a camera everywhere he goes, he's not trying to work for the newspaper because it's 2017. And Peter Parker is as familiar with what the Avengers have been doing in this world as we, the paying audience, are. It definitely made Spider-Man more relevant and relatable. The movie picks up right after Civil War and that whole throwdown with Spider-Man in the airport, taking the Captain shield and everything. Parker is itching to be an Avenger. That's what he wants. He wants to do more. He wants the next mission. He he wants more. And Tony Stark is basically telling him, look, we'll call you when we need you. Keep your feet on the ground. Don't get into trouble. And well, when a teenager is told that they can't or shouldn't do something, guess what's going to happen next? Peter Parker, Tony Stark, Iron Man, Spider-Man have a very father-son type relationship. Peter basically idolizes Tony Stark. He wants to be like Tony Stark. He wants to prove that he's worth more. I'm sick of Mr. Stark treating me like a kid. But you are a kid. Yeah, a kid who can Stop a bus with his bare hand. He wants Tony to see how driven and capable he is. Stark, on the other hand, has been around the block. He knows the risks involved in being a hero. And he knows the more trouble you go looking for, the more trouble you're gonna find. So if Peter goes looking for trouble, he's probably gonna find it. So when Stark has to lay the law down with Peter, you really get this feeling like it's it's a parent scolding their child. And not because they're angry with you, it's because they're disappointed with you. And that second one is way worse. What if somebody had died? I was just trying to be like you. I wanted you to be better. I'm gonna need the suit back. But I'm nothing without this suit. If you're nothing without this suit, then you shouldn't have it. Let's switch gears and talk about the suit for a second. I was a little torn on Spider-Man's suit at the beginning of this movie. And you saw this in the trailer, you see a little bit of the AI that's going on in Spider-Man's suit. Basically having the same kind of AI as Jarvis inside the Spider-Man suit, except now her name is Karen. Tony Stark is the mentor to Peter Parker, so why wouldn't he try to protect Peter by giving him a tricked out suit? It makes sense. But you put a lot of technology in the hands of a teenager, and you know something's gonna go sideways. It's like giving the keys to your Lambo to a kid with a learner's permit. It's, it's risky. But when that suit got taken away, that's when I started to like the movie and Spider-Man even more. That second half of the movie is really Peter Parker trying to figure out who Spider-Man is. And I like the second half of the movie more than the first half for that exact reason. Let's talk about Michael Keaton as the Vulture. This may be the first Spider-Man villain that I really light. Now, now let me clarify, there are lots of cool villains. I mean, one of my favorites is still Doc Ock from Spider-Man, but I'm talking about a villain that in a way you can sympathize with. You can understand where he's coming from. Michael Keaton is basically a blue collar guy who's about to get everything taken away from him inadvertently by Stark, and he's just not about to let his friends and family suffer for something that's completely out of his control. Rich and the powerful, like Stark, they don't care about us. The world's changing, boys. Time we change too. <laughs> He seemed far more dangerous and menacing when it was just Michael Keaton than having the, the whole Vulture gear on. Because Michael Keaton, he's a badass. They really kept this movie to one main story, which was nice. Just one story, that's that's all we need. So overall, the flow of the movie is kept pretty superhero formulaic. You know, you have the hero, something bad happens, something worse happens, he has to overcome. However, there are enough twists and turns and revelations and characters and a number of things I didn't see coming. So that really helped keep things moving along. Kept you on your toes, kept things feeling fresh. Ultimately, you have a movie where Peter Parker is having to prove to himself and nobody else that he is Spider-Man. Tom Holland as Spider-Man, I will say, is probably the best Spider-Man I've seen on film. He had the right balance of kind of quippy, smart acidness, if that's a word. Wait a minute, you guys aren't the real Avengers. Hulk gives it away. New move I'm working on, not bad. Whoa. 
and also just has this relentless teenage drive and desire to just do something awesome. So I would say Spider-Man Homecoming and Tom Holland was pretty much the closest thing I have seen to taking Spider-Man from the comics and putting him on the screen. And on top of that, Tom Holland just really has some performance chops. There are some scenes in this movie where he's really torn up and he's torn up inside and he has tears welling up in his eyes. And I thought he really brought it. He really brought it out. Michael Keaton is an undeniably awesome pick as a villain. And in my opinion, the powers that be that Sony would be insane to let Michael Keaton be a one and done in the MCU. I, I hope to see more of him in the future. And it was nice to see a threat that was a person, not just a huge ball of energy in the sky. Now, was there anything that I didn't like? I'm totally fine with this not being an origin story. Who needs to see that again? But I would have liked to have seen a little more of the brain power from Peter Parker. You know it's there. You see a few glimpses of it. And also, there are a couple of action sequences that have so many cuts and so much movement going on that it's kind of difficult to tell what's going on. It's kind of hard to piece things together. It's a little, it's a little rough for me. But when it comes down to it, these were the only real negatives for me. One thing that became very apparent, and there's nothing wrong with this, is this was a superhero movie about a teenager made for teenagers. Spider-Man Homecoming is a very different tone that's geared towards a younger audience, obviously. Not a damn thing wrong with that, I'm just taking that into consideration. So as always, we come back to the main question of was I entertained? Yes, I was. Now, was this my favorite movie of the MCU? No. Was this a solid addition to the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Yes. Was this my favorite version of Spider-Man, Tom Holland as Spider-Man? Yes. For me, personally, I'm gonna give Spider-Man a silver screen rating. Totally worth seeing in the theater, and this movie is definitely planting a lot of seeds and setting up for the next wave of the MCU. But this is just my opinion. What I really wanna know is what you think. Did you see Spider-Man Homecoming? Did you like it? Did you not? Do you agree with me? Do you not? Throw it down in the comments. I really wanna know what you think. So stay entertained until next time, and until next time, bye-bye.